Okay, so this is a continuation of that other video. So this one is the second type. It's a line integral of vectors. The first one we did line integrals of functions. This one's a line integral of vector. Um, let me bring up the equations for it, and then I will talk about what they mean. All right, so here's the equations for the ones of the vector field. Um, let's talk about what this means first. Let's talk about that if we integrate a vector field um, or integrate a curve through a vector field, what we get is work done. So the equivalent of this, so think of work. Work was force times distance. If they're constant, it's easy. But if we think of the force as a as vectors, so think of the force as like a gravity field, or maybe like an electric field, like a charge field, or maybe it could be like the wind. And so some sort of a different force field. We've got three dimensionals, vectors are pointing in all sorts of directions. It doesn't have to be in one specific direction. Now the distance is not constant either. This would be a curve, so an example, let's say we've got like a spaceship going through a gravitational field. That spaceship is going to move along a certain curve. It's not necessarily going to move straight. It could move in a couple of circles through that gravity field, or it could go one direction first and then switch directions completely. Um, and, and so that's that curve, that distance. All right, so now looking at each different one of these kind of vectors. This first one, I'm oh, sorry. There we go. This first one here, this is really just notation. This is notation to say that we have some kind of of a of an a line integral that we're finding. Um, it's notation to say that we've got a force right there. And we're multiplying this by some kind of a distance that's not necessarily constant because we have a parameterization for r. All right, so this, there's two different ways that we can calculate this. Either way, we need to parameterize the curve. And when we do that, that gives us a vector r. So if you notice, these r's are bold. That is that vector r. So that vector, we could think of it as some x, some y, some z. And so for this first integral here, what we've got is that f is the vector field. It's a vector field. We can also write that as P, Q, R. So in this second one, that vector field there, P, Q, and then R, that's the vector field in that second one. All right, now this part right here, right there, that says plug in the R that you get. So it means plug in x, y, and z into that vector field. Didn't like myself enough room here. This is a dot product, and that is dotted with the derivative of r. That is r prime of t. And if we found r prime of t, that would be x prime, which would be a derivative of x, y prime, which is a derivative of y, and z prime, a derivative of z, and just notice that those are right there. And so essentially in this second formula, the dot product is done for you, but it sort of depends on uh, which form, there's kind of two different ways that we can write out these problems. Okay, so I think I have this all set up. The only other thing I want to say before I do an example is that once you get these integrals, you should only have t's in them. Notice these are all single integrals. 
So we start out with X's, Y's, and Z's, but once everything is plugged in, we should only have T's in these integrals. All right, let's do a couple of examples. All right, so in this first example, let's find the work done by the vector field, a vector field that's given by some vectors where the x component is yz, the y component is xz, the z component is xy. So the work done by that force field on a particle moving through it that moves in this direction. So every, every time it changes with time, it's going to move direction. It's going to have some kind of a curly path here of t, t squared, t cubed. And we're going to start at time 0, end at time 2. All right, so I'm going to bring up that, um, that force. All right, here's what's on your equation sheet. From the information given, this one's going to be the easiest thing to use. Because we're given an F, and there it is, and we're given an R, and so we're given an R, and so we would need to find R prime. Let's go ahead and do that since we know we need to find r prime of t. So r prime of t, we're going to take the derivative of every component. Derivative of t is 1, derivative of t squared is 2t, derivative of t cubed is 3t squared. Alright, so now what this formula says to do is to right here take f and plug in r. So what that means is that we are going to take this f and plug in r. So we're going to take y, that's t squared, plug it in, times z, that's t cubed, I'm going to plug that in. The next component is xz, x is t, I'm going to plug that in, z is t cubed, I'm going to plug that in. What did I just say I was going to do? X is t, z is t cubed, and I'm going to plug those in. All right, so now the next component, x, that would be t, times y, y is t squared, and that is f plugging in r. And now the next thing I need to do is dot that with the r prime of t, which we got 1, 2t, 3t squared. I'm going to integrate all this with respect to t. And I'm going to integrate from the bounds on t 0 to 2. OK, so now a dot product. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 times t squared times t cubed, so that's times a t to the fifth, or that is t to the fifth, plus t to the fourth, t cubed times t is t to the fourth, times 2t, so that would be 2t to the fifths, plus... 3t squared times t times t squared, so that's a 3t to the fifth. Combine them all together. So 3, 4, 5, 6t to the fifth. Integrate. So t to the sixth, then evaluate from 0 to 2. So we get 2 to the sixth, that would be 64. So that would be the work done by this force field, this given force field, on a particle moving in that direction. Right, so there's an example of using kind of that first formula, and I'm going to give you another example using the other formula. All right, so here's an example of that second form of it. Oh, let me bring that equation sheet up again. All right, so this is an equation that is in this form. It's a little bit hard to recognize. There's no dz in there. That guy's gone. So we have a p in there, which 
happens to be y and a q in there, which happens to be x squared. It's hard to recognize these sometimes, the difference between this and the line integral of a curve, the video before this. So take a look at the differences there. This one has a dx and dy. That curve before in the video before just had a ds. That's a pretty subtle difference there. All right, so we're looking at this second one, and the idea here is that we want to plug in so that we can get all t's, just t's in there, so then we can integrate. So we've got these different curves, and notice that we have two different curves. We have one curve that is the y equals x squared curve, and then we have a second curve that is the line. So we're going to have to do two different integrals here and add them together because of the difference in curves. For every single one of these, we have to get a parameterization because we need an x equals and we need a y equals in order to plug into all of this. So for C1, for this first curve, we need an x equals, we need a y equals, and then we're going to need some bounds. Now because y is equal to x squared, I'd use that. And then I'd just set x equal to x. That's a parameterization. It's in terms of one variable. Then our bounds would also have to be, have to do with x. So if I look at these points, x goes from negative 1 to 1. All right, so there's one curve. Now the line we can get from getting a point on that line. And then a parallel vector. The parallel vector, if I take 2 minus 1, that gives me 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So there's my parallel vector for that line. And so if I plug in x, I take the parallel vector, multiply it by t, add the point. And for y, I'm going to take the parallel vector, that's 0, multiply it by t, we get 0, and then add 1 to that and t goes from 0 to 1 when I create the line, the parametric equations for the line in this way. Um, and I can check them. I can plug in 0 and I get the point 1, 1. That's good. And if I plug in 1, then I get 2, 1, and that's my second point. Okay, I just checked. I wanted to make sure that I made that line correctly. All right, now that we have the parameterizations, we're going to have to have two different integrals. So let me do this C1 integral first. Okay, so for this integral, I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to 1. Those were my bounds on x. y, I'm going to plug in for y here. y was equal to x squared. dx, that's a derivative of x with respect to x, which is just going to be 1, plus x squared. I plug in x for x, and I get x squared. And then dy in this case, so I would need to find the derivative of y, which would be 2x. That would go right here. And I need to integrate that with respect to x. So for this integral, I've got x squared plus 2x cubed. I need to integrate that. So I get x cubed over 3 plus x to the 4th over 2. And I need to integrate from negative 1 to 1. So I'll we'll plug in 1. 1 third plus 1 half. And then I'm going to subtract when I plug in negative 1. So that would be a negative one-third, and negative one is a plus one-half. So it looks like one-half and one-half cancel, and I've got one-third plus one-third, which is two-thirds. All right, that's the first part. So for the first part of this, I get two-thirds. I still have this second line. So now let's do the second line. Same process. I'm going to plug, I basically plug stuff into here until I have one variable. Notice now that my variables are t's. No big deal. 
doesn't matter. You can have different variables for different integrals as long as you have one variable for the same curve. This curve all had x's, this curve all has t's. All right, so I'm plugging everything into, again, into here. All right, so y, y was 1. dx, well, I need to find that. I need to find a derivative with respect to x. That's just going to be 1. Plus x squared. x is t plus 1. Square that. Times dy, well, the derivative of a constant is 0. And I've got to integrate from 0 to 1. So basically, I just have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1. So that's t from 0 to 1. I just get 1. And in calculating this, I need to add these together now. So I'm going to have 2 thirds plus 1, 3 thirds. So that would give me 5 thirds.